Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel, check it out, we now have working fonts in Super Mario Odyssey on Yuzu's latest Canary builds. There have been significant performance improvements when using the rendering of these fonts, they now practically have no performance impact on the game, although unfortunately not every single font is being rendered correctly at this point in time. Regardless of this, it doesn't even matter, even the fact that we have these fonts rendered right now makes it so much easier to play this game and also many of the other games that also now have rendering fonts, for example the Nintendo Switch exclusive ARMS. Now this rendering fonts fix is only one of the smallest fixes we have seen in this emulator in the past two days since I made my last video. As you can see, here in Lake Kingdom the graphics are almost absolutely perfect. In this gameplay footage I'm bringing on screen right now, you can see that in all previous versions of Yuzu Emulator, even though the colors and graphics were almost rendered perfectly, you can see that we had this horrible black flickering which was very, very distracting and absolutely destroyed performance also. As you can now very clearly see, this flickering mess has been completely removed from absolutely every single kingdom, not only giving us a much better graphical representation of the game on this emulator, but also giving us a very nice performance boost also. You could not even believe to imagine that after 2 or 3 months of this game booting that it is anywhere near the stage of emulation that it is right now. It is actually absolutely mind blowing the fact that you could almost fool someone who wasn't aware of the fact that there is an emulator that is currently running this game into thinking that this is Super Mario Odyssey running on the Nintendo Switch itself. Now we also have a small bit of other news and that is in relation to the stutter that you see in gameplay. This is due to the caching of your shaders into your GPU driver if you are not aware. There is a developer of Yuzu who is currently working on a work in progress implementation of what you or I would know as shader caches in emulators. Now while we have not got any kind of a hands on with this PR or we haven't got any branches to show us exactly how it works just yet, it is still pretty cool that these kind of things are being worked on even this early in the lifespan of this emulator. Hopefully sooner rather than later we will get some kind of fix for the stuttering in gameplay. Who knows, the developers of this emulator are doing such an absolutely amazing job that maybe they will make the shaders so accurate and so performance optimized that we won't even need shader caches at all. So you can see that while yes the graphics are awesomely rendered, we do still have some of these conditional rendering bugs for example when I switch from screenshot mode back into gameplay, you can see that this wall in the far distance is not being currently rendered. Now you can see that when you get closer to it, it does indeed render and this is just another bug that I have absolutely no doubt that the developers of this emulator are going to solve sooner rather than later. So as I already said, practically every single kingdom that had this flickering texture problem is now completely fixed. As many of you would have seen in my past few videos, I showed off the render quality of Snow Kingdom and as you can see right now, just look how clean the graphics are. Once again, bringing in some gameplay footage from my video from only two days ago, you can see that this entire kingdom was plagued with this weird flickering texture issue. Another small thing that I want to point out but I think is absolutely awesome that has been fixed is the fact that when you go into the water, they have now fixed this overlay that shows you when you are getting frozen and Mario actually also visually shows exactly his state of being frozen and changes as time goes by. Now I know that not obviously everyone is going to care about all these little small little minute details but at least for me I love seeing these little small changes being added and it really just does bring these games even further towards being perfectly emulated. Now let's go back to the very first kingdom we ever went in game on in Super Mario Odyssey. Here in Sand Kingdom you can also see that it is absolutely now awesomely rendered in this new version of the emulator. Now as I showed previously we do still have this weird conditional rendering bug where the inverted pyramid is not being currently rendered but 
as I said, it's probably going to be fixed in the next one or two weeks and we will have an absolutely awesome experience on this emulator, even more awesome than we are seeing right now. Now another thing that was fixed is they fixed, I think it was alpha channels, I might be wrong with it being alpha channels, but that fixed the graffiti on these walls having these really weird black outlines. Now some of these textures I have noticed do have this weird flickering, you can especially notice it on some of the plants in Cascade Kingdom, but to be honest, look at this. Previously, probably about six days ago, this area, even running in undocked mode, which is half the resolution, I was only able to get about 25 or 26 FPS in this area, whereas now I'm up in the mid to high 40s. Now you can see when we move further up this hill that we have more of this conditional rendering, as you can see stuff popping in, and you can also see, I know it's been fixed for quite a while now, but the reflection and refraction in any of these ice blocks is just so cool. It's just another one of those details that I absolutely love in games and when it gets perfected it just looks so awesome and makes the game look so amazing. Now that reflection and refraction stuff was fixed probably about seven or eight days ago if I remember correctly but it's just another one of those little small minute details the same as with the changing of Mario's texture when he gets frozen and it just makes the game just look so much more immersive and makes it look so much more awesome. Another kingdom that has seen a pretty enormous boost in visual fidelity and now almost looks, apart from these weird vertex issues on this 2D plane in front of the character, is Ruined Kingdom. You would have seen in a few of my videos, uh, probably about five or six days ago, that all of the ground in this kingdom was rendered with these really weird green tiles, whereas now you can see, yeah, just look at that skybox, how awesome does that look? You could see when we were warping up here or coming up here on the electric current that the ground wasn't rendered, that's another conditional rendering bug as we've seen previously in the video, but just look at that skybox, how awesome does this area now look now that we have the skyboxes, we have correct textures, we have correct dragon rendering, we have the ground correctly rendering. All we need fixed in this kingdom now is the conditional rendering bug and we also need to have sub areas fixed which unfortunately at this point in time are not currently working right now. What basically happens is if you enter into a sub area the graphics will be just completely rendered black apart from the skybox and then when you exit out of that area back into the main hub world the entire hub world will just be rendered the exact same it will be rendered completely broken. Now another rendering fix, and it is a pretty big one to be honest, is the fact that when you come to Kingdom Select, you can obviously now see that the fonts are now correctly rendered. We do still have this weird black flickering issue, and I'm pretty sure this is due to the world preview being an NVDEC video, and because that's not currently implemented in Yuzu at this point in time, that is why I think we get that weird flickering or flashing when we transition between the two different kingdoms. Now even though the black flicker was fixed, in Cap Kingdom, it's literally the only kingdom that we have any kind of weird graphical effects like flicker or any broken graphics. This red weird flickering effect is not related for some reason to the other issue and hopefully it will also be fixed very very soon. As well as that, I really hope they can fix the physics interactions between Mario and physically based objects in the world. For anyone who's played Super Mario Odyssey on the Switch, you would know that the fog is supposed to move away from Mario, and also there is supposed to be like physics interactions between the water and Mario's character model himself. You can however see that Mario does indeed get wet, you can see the sheen on him that will eventually dry, very similar to what I showed earlier in the video when we entered into the cold water, but you can also see that in Cap Kingdom we are still suffering from this conditional rendering bug. You can see that Cap Tower, once you're a certain distance away from it, is not rendering, but regardless of that, it's absolutely mind-blowing once again to just see how much of a graphical upgrade Cap Kingdom and pretty much every single kingdom in this game has received in these last few updates in the last day or so. Pardon the pun, but all of us really must tip our cap to all of the developers of this emulator, and a lot of thanks must also be given to all of the people who are contributing to these developers so that they can dedicate even more of their time to this emulator's development. A quick shout out really at this point in time has to go out to John S and Mystic Exile. These two guys are basically putting bounties on very tough to fix issues in this emulator. For example, John put a bounty of I think $100 to get the softlocks fixed. Basically the softlocks would happen 
like you're seeing right now, when you would enter any sub area previously on the emulator, it would just crash. Whereas now you're about to see that it does successfully load into these areas. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't a 100% fix due to the fact that when you load into this area, the graphics look fine, at least in this one sub area. But then when you exit back out to the main hub world, you're going to see that yes, the graphics in this area are completely blacked out. And the only way you can fix it is to save your game, exit back to the main menu or close the emulator and then reload your game save at that point in time, the graphics will be completely fixed. The last area that we're going to be taking a look at is, it's again another place I showed off in my gameplay footage in the last four to five days. And as you can see, once again, this kingdom is almost perfectly rendered on this Switch emulator right now. So with all of these new changes and upgrades to this emulator, it's probably about time I do another compatibility pass and test out all of the games that I have currently available to me. With that said, please do leave recommendations or requests for any games that you would like to see tested on this emulator down in the comments section of this video. And as always, if I am able to test that game, I will do so. At the end of this video, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my new and old patron supporters over on the BSOD Gaming Patreon. Without your continued support, I would not be able to put out half the amount of videos that I already currently do. If you want to help with the support of my channel, you can head on over to my Patreon. You will find a link for that down in the description. As I always say, donations and pledges are much appreciated, but 100% not a requirement. Down in the description of this video, you will also find a link to the Patreon of the Yuzu development team. Please, please, if you ever want to use this emulator, either right now or at any time in the future, please do consider pledging and supporting these guys. As you can very clearly see by all of the videos I've been putting out about Yuzu in recent days, they are doing some absolutely outstanding work. So once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.